we have learned that the high courts are the highest judicial authorities in the state or the union territory in which they are functioning. Do you remember what jurisdiction the high courts have? Well, the high courts have original, appellate and revisory jurisdiction. Sometimes we use the word jurisdiction and functions synonymously. But in this video, we will be talking about the functions of the high court. So, for example, your class teacher has the power over maintaining your discipline in the school. And she has the power to check your homework and to see that you are on good behavior in the school. But how does she execute this power? That is, how does she make sure that this power is exercised? So, for example, your teacher can detain you after school or she can ask your parents to come and speak to her. So, as we can see that the teacher has jurisdiction or power over the discipline, the behavior and the homework of the child. And she executes this power or this function by punishing or giving certain restrictions to the children. So, that is how we can differentiate between jurisdiction and functions. So, the High Courts of India have been given several functions. It has the function to enforce the fundamental rights. It is a court of record. It has the power to carry out proceedings against contempt of court. It has the power of judicial review. It has power of public interest litigation and it also exercises control over the subordinate courts. So, the constitution of India has given us several fundamental rights such as the right to equality, right to freedom, right against exploitation and these other rights. But it is not enough to merely give these rights. These rights have to be guaranteed and protected. So, the constitution empowers the Supreme Court and the High Courts to issue writs to enforce the fundamental rights. Now, imagine that you and your parents live in a rented flat. The owner of this flat is not getting new tenants, so he wants you and your family to stay there. But your parents have bought a new flat somewhere else and want to move out. So, the owner locks up your parents in that flat. In such a circumstance, what can you do? You can move the Supreme Court or the High Courts and say that your fundamental right has been taken away. The Constitution empowers the High Court to issue writs. So, the High Courts have the power to issue writs for the enforcement of fundamental rights or for other purposes. The High Courts can issue writs. What are writs? Writs are legal instruments to enforce obedience to the orders of a court. We have five types of writs in India. We have the writ of habeas corpus, mandamus, prohibition, certiorari and quo warranto. To know more about these writs, you can click on the link to access the iDictionary feature. So, can you answer this now? Which court or courts have the power to issue writs for the enforcement of fundamental rights? Is it only the Supreme Court? only the high courts, the supreme court and the high courts or the district courts? Yes, the correct answer is the supreme court and the high courts. Now, if you had noticed, we had said that the high courts have the power to issue writs for the enforcement of fundamental rights or for any other purpose. Now, what is this other purpose? It means that the High Courts can not only issue writs to enforce the fundamental rights but also certain other rights such as the legal rights. So, the High Courts can issue writs for the enforcement of fundamental rights as well as legal rights. For example, if someone goes to the police station to file an FIR that is a first information report then he cannot be denied the right to file an FIR. 
this is one of the legal rights that are available to us as citizens of India. So, if a police officer refuses to file an FIR, it is a punishable offence. In such a situation, you can approach the superintendent of police and put a complaint there. But even after that, if no action is being taken and your FIR is still not being filed, then you can file a writ petition in the high courts. So, the high courts can issue writs to enforce your legal right in this case. A high court is also known as a court of record. A high court is a court of record because its judgments are recorded for evidence and testimony. So, the decisions or the judgments that are passed by the high courts can be captured or preserved for future reference. So, as we know that all the judgments that are made in the high court are binding on all of the lower courts or the subordinate courts, but they are not binding on the other high courts, but they can still be produced in court in support of an argument. So, the high court is a court of record because its judgments can be captured and preserved and put forward when similar cases come to the high court or the lower courts in the future. Other than this, the High Court also has the power to punish for contempt of itself. So, a High Court has the power to punish for contempt of itself. So, if a person disobeys the High Courts or criticizes the High Courts in a derogatory way, then they can be punished for the contempt of court. So, the High Courts have been given this power to ensure the judicial independence, that is to make sure that the faith or the trust that the people have in the high courts, the highest judicial authority in the states, does not fall. To know more about what contempt of court is and why the high court has the power to punish for contempt of court, you can click on the link to access the I dictionary feature. The high courts also have the power of judicial review. What is judicial review? Judicial review is the process through which a high court examines whether a law passed by the legislature or an action of the executive is in accordance to the constitution. So, the high court has to check whether a law that has been passed by the legislature or an action that has been taken by the executive matches with the provisions of the constitution. It has to ensure that these laws or actions do not contradict the spirit of the constitution. So, the court exercises judicial review when there is a violation of the fundamental rights in a dispute between the union government and the states or between states or if a national or state law or executive action goes against the provisions of the constitution. Now, what will happen if these do go against the constitution? In such a case, if the high court finds any law or order going beyond the provisions of the constitution, it can declare them null and void. That is, the legislature will not be able to enact that law or the executive will not be able to take that action it will be striked out. So, that is the power of judicial review. The high courts are the guardian and interpreter of the constitution, which is why they have to make sure that everything in the country goes in accordance to the constitution and does not go against the spirit of the democracy. Now, even though the high courts take up cases from orders or judgments passed by the lower courts or the subordinate courts, it can also take up certain cases or matters in which the concern is that of the larger public. As we are citizens of a country, we have to be active and aware of our participation in the betterment of the country. Similarly, the high courts also have to be active and assertive in promoting justice throughout the country or the states or union territories. So, sometimes a public spirited individual or an organization can move the high court on behalf of the larger public when 
a certain problem is being faced by a large section of society. This is known as public interest litigation. So public interest litigation is the use of the law to protect the interests of the people or to raise issues of public concern. And as we have seen, any person or organization can move the court on behalf of the general public. So in most cases, what we see is that anyone who is facing a problem moves the court in order to resolve the problem. But in public interest litigation, even if this person or organization is not specifically facing that problem, it can still move the court to protect the interests of the general public or the citizens of the country. So for example, when there are matters such as pollution, exploitation of women and children, road safety, these matters can be taken to the high courts as public interest litigation. Now let us look at a case of public interest litigation to understand it better. So on 31st August 2006, the Bombay High Court asked the broadcasters to give an undertaking that they would abide by the Cable Television Network Act 1995 and also abide by the orders of the court in the interest of the general public. This is when the court was hearing a public interest litigation case that was filed by Professor Pratibha Nathani of St. Xavier's College. Her concern was that films that were not certified by the Central Board of Film Certification or the CBFC were allowed to be broadcast on television channels which allowed free public exhibition and was having a bad impact on the children. So she demanded that such films should not be shown and broadcasters who were still broadcasting such content on their channels should be penalized. So the High Court of Bombay said that only those films that had the U or the universal certification that everyone can watch and the UA certification which means that only children with adult guidance or supervision can watch, only those certified films should be allowed to have free public exhibition in those television channels and the high court also directed seven channels to furnish a list of all the films they were to screen to the police. So we can see in this case how the public interest litigation was filed by a person who was not directly affected by the issue but was concerned for the public safety. We know that the high courts are the highest judicial authorities in the states or the union territories and it exerts a considerable amount of influence and power on the subordinate courts or the lower courts that come under its territorial jurisdiction. So the high courts are also responsible for supervising the actions of the lower courts. We have already learnt about the appellate jurisdiction of the high courts where certain cases that are there in the lower courts can be appealed to in the high courts. Other than this, the high court supervises and has administrative powers over the subordinate courts in the state. So the high courts can make certain administrative changes as well, such as it can give directions to the lower courts or the high courts can also make certain rules and regulations regarding the appointment, demotion or leave of absence of the officers of the subordinate or lower courts. So as we can see, the high courts have considerable power and influence on the subordinate courts. So the high court supervises the lower courts such as the civil courts, the criminal courts and the revenue courts of the districts. So in this video, we have talked about the functions of the high courts. We know that the high courts have been empowered to enforce fundamental rights by issuing writs. They also are known as court of record and can punish someone for contempt of court. They have the power of judicial review that is they can check any law or action passed by the legislature or the executive and declare it null and void if it goes against the constitution. The high courts also have the power to address public interest litigation and exercise supervision on the subordinate or lower courts. 
so all these functions show that the high courts are very powerful and they are the highest judicial authority in the states or the union territories in which they are functioning and through all of these functions the high court ensures that it administers justice throughout the state don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon you can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the delta step app to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus master each topic with our adaptive practice technology get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests get all your doubts resolved instantly learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy it is rewarding too so register for free now